All right, so today we are talking about the cap that sits on top and the three solenoids that are affiliated with the injection pump and basically what they do and how they work and what you should see as far as coming on, click, clicks, clack, clacks, and all the other jizz jazz. All right, so starting off, I would like to start by talking about this um, engine cold temperature switch. You notice I said switch, which means that it's a click click. It's not, it doesn't vary like um, other, like a sensor would. A sensor is something that varies. So this is a switch, it's either on or it's off. And it's, it, it's status changes when it hits 114 degrees. Okay, at room temperature, if you was to ohm it out on the two prongs that are sticking up on, it's back here, it's hidden, just look it up, engine coolant sensor, it's right on this loom. If you can't find it, just follow this loom down, and it looks, there's the plug that goes to it, okay? okay. And if you ohm it out, it should be roughly about three ohms, and if it ohms out to chassis, that's a no-no, it should not. It should not ohm out to chassis, chassis, it should be open, so if you touch a prong, and it ohms and it ohms out to it, and then you need to you need to change that because that signal isn't going to open at, or change its its state at the appropriate time. Okay, so start by talking about the high RPM solenoid. This solenoid actuates this linkage right here, kicks it up a little bit to roughly about 900 RPM, give or take, from about idle at 750. Just kind of throwing those numbers out there to give you. Um, something to go off of and basically when your engine reaches 114 degrees you'll hear your engine kick down a little bit. This wire which is right here it's still attached. Let's see if I can pop it off there for you. There we go. I got it. Looks like that. Goes that guy. There he is a solenoid. Say hi solenoid. Hi. And there's two wires. It's just how it is. He's red. I can't tell if he's striped or not, but oh well, but you get the idea. He goes back there, and then this other wire that's back here, this one is your um, advanced solenoid. There's a terminal that's furthest back from these other two, so there's another one right there. We'll get to him in just a second. This one advances the timing, and he waits for the same signal that the high RPM solenoid does. So these guys are friends. They hang out. They're like, what's up, man? What's up? What's up, buddy? And they, they actuate the solenoids. They, they send power at the same time, which changes the whole characteristics of, of your whole engine running. Okay? And not only that, but the um, advanced uh, timing solenoid um, also um, helps out with uh, uh, bubbles and it sends it back um, to the tank and it helps kind of purge this this IP pump for example all right and so then this guy he also has two wires so just like this guy has two wires this middle guy here he only comes on only comes on when the engine is in the on position so when the engine is when or when your your uh, key switch is in the run or on this is on, should be on engine, not running, doesn't matter. This will be on, and it goes to this solenoid that's, that's closer to us over on this side, not the back one, this one, okay? Following so far? Again, these two only send power when the engine reaches 115 degrees, 114 degrees, right about in there, okay? And then this is my return that sends the fuel back um, to the return side of things, and if you're confused about these two wires, you're like, "Isn't this the? Isn't aren't these in this red and white one here? Isn't that? Isn't that affiliated with with a engine temperature switch? No, this is the sender for your gauge, okay, and this is the sender for your temperature light. Okay, that's all I'm going to go um, is deep on that right now because our focus is, is is on here. All right. The other thing is this little strap right here, this is a ground strap. What you could do if you're troubleshooting this is grab a multimeter and ohm out 
from this point, grab them right here, make sure it's nice and clean so you don't get a false reading. I'm not gonna teach you how to use a multimeter. And go from here to just any good negative point. You can use your battery and uh, make sure that there's really good continuity between this bar, okay? Because that right there is if you have a bad ground, it's gonna affect these other three solenoids and you could be experiencing the, the issues that you're having. This is a really good easy point for you to start at and it doesn't take any money, just a multimeter. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take simply a positive wire, it's just a jumper wire, it doesn't have to look like this, it's just a jumper wire, and I'm just using this copper wire so I can reach up in there without uh, touching things I'm not supposed to. And what you can do is you can do this to manually check and listen for click clicks and make sure that your solenoids are working. The other thing is you could do is you could you can ohm them out. That's up to you. I'm just using a jumper wire. So what I'll do is I'll touch this solenoid down here, and it should move my linkage. Oh, you can see that the bar is not moving. See that? Okay, I'm gonna have to look into that. Looks like my solenoid is weak. So if my engine was running, my voltage would be a little bit higher and this solenoid would have a little bit more power. So probably all I need is just some WD-40 and there's probably no issue with that guy, but he, he, he is a little bit weak, but we're gonna move on just for demonstrational purposes. So next, I'm gonna go to the engine shutoff solenoid, which is the tab that's closer to us. It's kind of hard to see, it's under this return. And I'm gonna listen to her click. Click clicks. That's good. That's a good sign. That just means that the coil is not bad and all is well. And next, I'm going to try this one back here. I should hear click clicks. This is the advance. Okay, click clicks. I got click clicks and clack clacks. All right. Good to go. And that's just one way that you can uh, test and make sure that um, those are functioning appropriately. Okay, I only wanted to touch a hint on this part. Um, this is the spring. If you lose your throttle and it's flopping all over the place, check the spring. Everything does eventually break. And I don't know if you can see this or not. Looks like I'm having uh, uh, phone batteries low. But there is two screws right here. That screw that's further back is um, if you wish to <laughs> control how high your engine's revving, well, then you would adjust the back one. If you want to control how low your engine's revving, or idling, rather, if you think it's idling too low, um, there's just a simple little screw right there, and you can adjust that up or down. Um, but I suggest you uh, refer back to the owner's manual on what um, uh, manufacturer, manufacturer uh, suggests. Hey, please like and subscribe. If this video helped you, and at least helped you troubleshoot and make sure the issue wasn't what you thought it was, hey, please like and subscribe. I spend a great amount of time learning how these systems work, and I make videos on how to help people um, who are just trying to get their stuff back on the road. Okay, like and subscribe, support independent channels like myself. Thank you, and have a nice day.